ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Say, kids, before you go to bed tonight, why not have a treat? A big slice of Betty Crocker white cake and a glass of milk. If your mom has Betty Crocker white cake mix on hand, it couldn't be easier. In fact, you can surprise your folks and bake a delicious white cake yourself. The finest ingredients are right in the mix. So all you have to do is add water and the whites of two fresh eggs. Isn't that easy? And quick, too. You just pop it into the oven and the result is always perfect. Betty Crocker promises you a perfect cake every time you bake. Cake after cake after cake. And you can frost your Betty Crocker white cake with a thick, creamy chocolate frosting. Or enjoy it plain with a dish of ice cream. You know, Betty Crocker white cake has all the special goodness and keeping quality of the best homemade. Ask Mom to keep several packages of Betty Crocker cake mix on hand and bake up a perfect cake soon. <laughs> With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! Late one afternoon, the driver of a stagecoach returned to the town of Gunsight on foot. In the sheriff's office, he explained how Cherokee Smith and his partner, Rusk, had stopped the stage, forcing him to walk back to town while they drove the vehicle away. Sheriff Gospel organized a posse and rode after the stolen convoy. <laughs> At Black Rock Creek, he found it abandoned, together with a team of horses, an empty strong box, and the tracks of two riders. He followed the tracks to the water's edge. Then turn to Deputy Mose Morgan. Well, Cherokee and his pal have done it again, Mose. Yeah, rode into the creek to hide their trail. I should have expected it. They use the same trick after every holdup. We gotta stop those crooks. There's only one way to stop Mose. How? Just tell me how. Get a fella here who's sure to capture him. Who? Lone Ranger. The Lone Do you know the Lone Ranger? I met him a couple of years ago. Well, then ask him to come here, Sheriff. Ask him to I'd help have us. asked him a long time ago if I knew where to find him. Oh. I don't even know how to get a message to him. So we'll have to try to capture that crook without help. You sure haven't had any luck so far. Let's hope our luck changes, Mose. Though the sheriff and his deputy didn't know it, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had heard that Cherokee Smith and his partner were operating in gunsight. Determined to capture the notorious outlaws, the masked man and his Indian friend were a short distance from town when they passed what appeared to be an abandoned mine. The Lone Ranger signaled a halt. Who's it? 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 Tucson Crockett, I own this mine. Now clear out like I said, or I'll blow your heads off. Very well, Tucson. Come on, daughter. Uh, get him up, Scott. Come on, Tucson. Early darkness was falling as the Lone Ranger and Toto drew rein in an alley behind the sheriff's office. Who's it? A few moments later, they opened the door without knocking and entered. Good evening, Sheriff. We met a few years ago, but you may have forgotten. I forgot my eye. Mr. Is it really you? You remember, Toto? 
Why, sure I do. Howdy, Toto. Oh. Wait, I, I can't believe it. Sit down, sit down. <laughs> Thanks. Why, only today I was wishing I knew how to find you. We're looking for Cherokee Smith. But so am I. I spent all afternoon trying to pick up the skunk's trail. He robbed another stagecoach today. Tell me what you know about it, Sheriff. Well, not much to tell. This afternoon, the garden driver came in on foot. Cherokee and his pal Russ stole the stagecoach. We found it at Black Rock Creek with an empty strong box nearby. Well, what about his trail? Uh, we lost the tracks of the creek the same as we always do. Those critters have a hideout somewhere near here. But where it is and how to get to it after a holdup beats me. There are a lot of hiding places around here. I know the hills are full of them. But the tracks never head for the hills. They stop at the creek. We passed an excellent hideout on the way to town. Where? A couple of miles east of here. It looks like an abandoned mine. Oh, you mean the old golden rock? A man with a rifle's on guard to drive away trespassers. Well, that's Tucson Crockett. Oh. Him say him own mine. He does. And it was a mighty rich one, but it gave up. Tucson spent all his cash trying to hit pay dirt again, but he never found it. Uh, why him stay at mine? That's all he has left, Tonto. Most folks around here know him and leave him alone. Well, the mine's deep, isn't it? Nearly 200 feet with tunnels, galleries, and crosscuts running through it. Uh, you'd need a map to find your way around down there. Have you been there lately, Sheriff? Tucson won't let anyone near the place anymore. Oh, what's he afraid of? I, I don't know. It might be interesting to find out. Maybe so. I'd like to look around the old mine. Why? Tucson may keep everyone away from the place because he's hiding Cherokee Smith and Rusk. Oh, Tucson would do that. Eh, we'll soon know whether he would or not. Well, more power to him. I'm going to call on the owner of the stage line. I should have reported to him as soon as I got back to town with the posse, but I hated to give him more bad news. <laughs> now I can tell him you're after Cherokee Smith. That'll make him feel a lot better. We may see you later, Sheriff. Right? The moon was rising, and as the Lone Ranger and Toto neared the shaft house... Get him up, scout! Toto turned to the side while the masked man went on alone. Tucson Crockett was still on guard. He came to the door and threatened the approaching masked man with his rifle. Get away from here, mister! But the Lone Ranger continued his slow advance. You hurry here, mister! I say get out! Oh, oh, oh easy, the big fellow. I warned you. Tucson, I've come back to ask permission to go through your mine. Move on or I'll blow your head off. Got him, Toto. Me go. I'll take that rifle. Let me go. You take it easy. Take it easy. All right, Toto, let him go. Dad, right you. Give me my rifle. I'll return it when I remove the cartridges. And if you're here to rob me... No, we're not. Well, you're after something. We're looking for Cherokee Smith and his partner. Well, come to the wrong place to look for crooks, mister. I can't keep you from looking. Thanks. Now, you go down there without a guide, you'll never get out. We'll risk that. You uh, want me to show you around? Oh, we'd appreciate it. Uh, come on, now. Take both of you down the shaft and the hoist. Good. Here's your rifle. Yeah, thanks. We'll be with you as soon as we've taken care of our horses. While the Lone Ranger stayed with Tucson, Toto led Silver to the place where Scout had been hidden and tied him alongside. When he rejoined Tucson and the masked man, they took lanterns and started a donkey engine, then used an old mine hoist to go down to the first level of the goldenrod. After exploring it thoroughly, they descended to the second level. Finally, they reached the lowest level, nearly 200 feet below the surface. But they found no trace of the outlaws. As they turned to go back to the main shaft, the Lone Ranger said, we owe you an apology, Tucson. I told you you wouldn't find Cherokee Smith here. Well, thanks for showing us to the mine. Well, now that you've seen it, I hope you'll leave me alone. <laughs> we'll not bother you again. How much farther do we have to go to reach the main shaft? We'll turn to the next cross cut. Okay, Mr. Abbey. What is it, Toto? You look there. Wait a minute, Tucson. Uh, what you find? Footprints. Oh. Oh, well, they're mine. I, I was down here yesterday. Those I... footprints are much larger than yours. Ah. Them head for cross cut. We missed. Yes, you're right. Toto, stay with Tucson. I'll see where they lead. Uh, he wait here. Mighty smart of you to notice those footprints, Injun. I've never spotted them myself. You've not seen them before? No, I. Hey, look out behind you! Uh, ah! 
As Tottle turned toward the cross cut behind him, Tucson brought his rifle butt down hard against the Indian's head. <laughs> Fooled you, didn't I, Redskin? But you and your mask pal are due for an even bigger surprise. I'm clearing out of here and leaving you to die. <laughs> We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. This is the Lone Ranger. If you want to be a champion at anything, remember, others have done it in spite of obstacles. Take rodeo champion Bob Maynard. He did it the hard way. He proved champions are made, not born. Bob didn't even have the advantage of growing up on a western ranch. As a boy, he lived in Chicago. But Bob started riding when he was eight years old. At 14 in California, he became a stable hand. Today, Bob Maynard is one of the top money winners in rodeo competition. He sure is, Lone Ranger. And like many champions in all sports, Bob still chooses Wheaties for his favorite training dish. There's no question about it. Champions are made, not born. And there's no question why champions choose Wheaties for their training diet. They want that famous wheat energy. They get it with Wheaties, because there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Champions are made, not born. Get on your way with Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Now to continue. A few moments later, the Lone Ranger found Tonto where Tucson left him. Tonto, what happened? Tonto! The hoist. Who's on? Come on, Mister. Come back here. I'm going up. You two will die down there. <laughs> Keep us happy. Steady, fellow. Steady. Oh, let quick me. Let him go. He's taking the hoist. And leave us here. Yes. It's my fault. Me let him trick me. Don't blame yourself, Tonto. Right now we've got to find a way out of here. Without hoist, we never get out. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tucson Crockett left the shaft house and ran toward Black Rock Creek, which flowed past the rear of the mine. He waded across the creek to the opening of a large cave where Cherokee Smith and Rusk waited. The outlaws listened attentively to Tucson's account of what had happened at the mine. So I left the masked man this pal Tonto 200 feet underground. <laughs> Cherokee and I were on the lower level, and we heard you coming down on the hoist with two fellas. So we left by the secret exit and came here, figuring to go back when they were gone. They found your footprints. Yeah, those two are double-barrel poison to fellas like me. You know who they are, Cherokee? I've heard of a masked man, the redskin named Tano. The only engine named Tano I ever heard of, right? But... Yeah, the Lone Range. <laughs> Great day alive. You mean that I captured the Lone Ranger? That's right, Tucson. Well, I'll be... It's a good thing we weren't in the Goldenrod when he came looking for us. I'd like to know what made him figure you were using the mine for a hideout. No one pulls that gent for long. I'm wondering how long it'll take him to find the exit that leads to the creek. There's one way to make sure he never finds you. Uh, how? We set off a couple of charges of blasting powder that'll blow away enough dirt and rocks to change the course of the creek. But you might flood the mine if you do that. That's what we want to do. And the masked man, the engine, will drown. You can't do it. And why not? I own the golden rock. It's worthless. I know that. What but... we paid you for helping us will more than cover the damage, Tucson. Well, I... And, uh, on top of that, you get part of the gold going east on the midnight stage. Huh? Rusk and I were planning the robbery when you came here. And it'll be our last job. With what we get tonight, we'll all be on Easy Street for the rest of our lives. You'll cut me in on it, huh? We'll pay you well. Now, come on. We'll get the blasting powder. As soon as we've taken care of the Lone Ranger and his engine pal, we'll ride to stop that stage. <laughs> Lone Ranger and Tonto were in the main shaft of Tucson's mine. Unaware of a secret exit, they considered other means of escape. The horse is at the top of the shaft. There's no way to bring it down, Tonto. Akima's hobby. Yes. Their ladder built it to slide the shaft. 
Up there. Yes, I noticed it. No, it can't be bad if not come down this far. It ends about two levels above us. That's right. We could reach it by cutting handholds in the face of this shaft. And that plenty slow work. It's our only hope. What's that? Explosions. Where them come from? Well, I don't know. Oh, look. Ah, water. The creek's near here. Uh, right behind mine. And Tucson blasted away rocks and dirt to make it flow into the mine. You're right. The water's rising fast. Tucson wants ground it. He may have outsmarted himself. Uh, what do you mean? The rate the water's rising will soon reach shoulder level. That's right. We'll stay afloat. When it rises far enough, we'll try to reach the ladder. Yes, I mean. That's a pretty good idea. The last man and Tonto were floating on the surface of the water when they heard the donkey engine start and Tucson's voice in the shack house. Then the hoist began a slow descent as faint lantern light illuminated the sides of the shack. Himasabi, Tucson, other fellows come down here. Get underwater so they don't see us. Uh-huh. Two down there? Oh, I see the water. Well, it's plenty deep. Hey, look here. If you don't stop this thing, we'll go back to the top and tell Cherokee to roll in instead. Oh, me. Me, I have them gone. Yes, Toto. She was honey. Two-time worked with Cherokee Smith and Russ. Outside the mine, Cherokee was already in the saddle. As Rusk swung to the back of his waiting horse, he grinned. Uh, you needn't worry about the masked man and his pal getting out of the mine, Cherokee. The water's risen at least 30 feet down there. Good. We're rid of the Lone Ranger for keeps. <laughs> Hit the saddle, too, son. You're riding with us on this hold up. What's your hurry, Cherokee? The stage might be ahead of schedule. Yeah, more than likely it'll be late. It always is. We're taking no chances. Early or late, I want to be on hand to stop it. Now, let's go. All right, come on, get it there. Sometime after the outlaws left, the Lone Ranger touched the ladder in the side of the main shaft with his fingertips. The water's level with the bottom of the ladder, Toto. I'll climb up. As the masked man pulled himself from the water and started upwards, Toto followed. A few minutes later, they reached the shaft house. Now we'll go after Tucson. With water dripping from their clothing, they hurried outside. There, Toto noticed the tracks on the moonlit ground. Himasabi, this footprint, made by Tucson. The others are like the boot prints you discovered in the mine. Not right. Tucson leaves here with two other fellas. Short time go. Come on, we'll head for our horses. Uh, it took but a few minutes to change to dry clothing carried in their saddlebags. Then the Lone Ranger and Tonto mounted. Easy, 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 you ride for the sheriff, Tonto. I'll follow the tracks of those three riders. Me, Sappy. Get them up. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. chosen place of concealment on the side of a steep hill overlooking the stage trail, Tucson Crockett loosened the bandana he had tied across his face. The bandana's mighty uncomfortable tied over a fellow's mouth and nose. Yeah. How much longer do you figure we'll have to wait, Cherokee? How do I know? Yeah, you know, a state makes connection with the eastbound train in Kansas City. Uh-huh. The goals put aboard the train and ship to New York and Philadelphia regularly. Yeah, but after pulling one hold up today, you're risking plenty trying another one. We're risking nothing. They'll all expect us to lay low after today's job. I hope no. not. All right. Hey, hey, listen. I hear the stage. Yeah, you're right. Get set to move as soon as it comes into sight. Rock your guard! Hey, hey, Rock, look! A mask man! Oh, you said he was dead! He can't be alive! While Rusk and Tucson stared in disbelief at a man they thought they killed, Cherokee Smith grabbed his gun. Oh! As it cleared the holster, the Lone Ranger fired, smashing Cherokee's 45. Rusk instinctively reached for his weapon. Oh, but a silver bullet struck him in the arm. Oh, Rusk uh, fell back under its impact. Let him have it, Tucson! Get him! No, not me! I, I give up! Hey, you low coat, you low your gun! Don't make a fast move, Cherokee! You'll not get me while there's a gun left! 
Look out! As Cherokee grabbed for Tucson's gun, a bullet brushed his right hand. My hand! My hand! The stage driver, hearing the shots and fearing outlaws, raced his team madly as the stage rumbled past. Meanwhile, the sight of his wounded friend sharpened Tucson Crockett's fears. Terrified that the masked man would seek revenge for the way he and Tonto had been tricked, Tucson pleaded. Don't shoot me, please, mister. I give up. I quit. I don't want any fight. Then get your hands up and keep them there. Uh, yes, sir. You want more gunplay, Cherokee? Yes. You got the upper hand now, Miss Cherokee. Look, here comes the sheriff. Tonto and a couple of deputies are with him. Oh, 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 Cherokee Smith, Rusk, and Tucson are here. You put handcuffs on the pole cat, Sheriff. Come on, boys. Oh, all right. Dad, I'm, right. I'm in trouble. You're in plenty of trouble. How do you told me what happened at the mine? I reckon there's no use trying to explain, Sheriff. The judge and jury will listen to your explanation. When they find out you tried to kill the masked man in Tonto, they're likely to be downright hard on you. Then let me talk. I can tell where to find the loot from the robbers. I can tell all I know. Oh, you dirty squealer. I'll squeal plenty. You gotta let me talk, Sheriff. Give me a chance. All right, you'll have a chance. Come on, Tonto. We we'll go back to our camp. Uh-huh. We may see you again, Sheriff. I hope so. I owe you two a heap of thanks. Forget it, Sheriff. Oh, we were as anxious as you were to capture those crooks. Uh-huh. Easy, steady, big fella. Easy, on us. Come on. Oh. All right, put out your hands, Tucson. I'll handcuff you for the trip to town. I, I was never crooked in my life before I met Cherokee and Rusk. They taught me into hiding them. You now pay I'm for sure. hiding them, Tucson. But you'll pay a lot more for trying to kill Tonto and the Lone Ranger. feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Pendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boyd. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.